All right, so we're coming up on the end of January, getting ready to head into February, and some people by now are losing motivation because they're not hitting their weight loss target as quickly as they anticipated. So today we are going to discuss some truths slash debunk some myths about weight loss. But first things first, my name is Jordan and on my channel I discuss all things keto, carnivore, low carb, provide tips and tricks to help you get your health back on track, as well as sprinkle in some grocery hauls and full days of eating. So if you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing below over wherever it is you get the picture, red button, hit the bell. Thank you, I appreciate it. Now let's get into the video. All right, so one of the first things to consider when it comes to uh, weight loss and expectations is that it takes time. Realistically, this takes months, and for some people who have a lot of weight to lose, this can take years. It took decades, um, potential, you know, many decades for some people to get to the point where they are very unhealthy and sick. So you should not expect for those decades of damage to disappear in a few weeks or sometimes even a few months. The most healthy way to lose weight is to do it over time in a slow, consistent, gradual process. Again, you're in it for the long haul. Set realistic deadlines, goals. If you're losing one to two pounds a week, that's probably the healthy, sustainable, maximum amount of weight especially if it's body fat, you can anticipate losing and should anticipate losing. Anything more than that is really just an added bonus. All right, truth number two about weight loss is it takes planning. And this kind of piggybacks off of you know patience and understanding it's commitment, you're in it for the long haul, but this takes planning. Whether you're going to attack it from a low carb ketogenic diet, a more carnivorous diet, um, you need to know the foods you're going to eat and with that planning experimentation So a little bit of both you need to experiment with how foods influence your body and make adjustments as you go But for the most part you should be planning out failing to plan is planning to fail um, So keep that in mind and continue to plan out your progress All right truth number three about weight loss is processed foods are processed foods whether they're a ketogenic version or not, it is still a processed foods. And generally speaking, those processed foods have the ability, and I'm talking about things like almond flour, coconut flour, creating these keto pizzas, cakes, brownies, desserts, whatever it might be, fat bombs, they're processed. They have more ability to bypass satiety signaling in the brain, thus causing you to overeat that food Overeating energy will stall your weight loss. Simple as that. Generally speaking, processed junk food, which are generally higher in sugar and fats, are what got us in this predicament to begin with. But now cre recreating those foods in a ketogenic form, just because they're lower in carb does not mean they're not, you're not able to then overconsume fat, store that excess dietary fat, and stall your weight loss progress. So be mindful of the processed foods you're eating, how often you're eating them, and the quantities you are eating them in. It's definitely easier to overeat. So again, try to avoid them as best as possible and you will reach your weight loss and physique goals a lot quicker because of that. All right, next on the list, truths about weight loss is exercise can help with the acute suppression of hunger. And I will put a link to my last video about crushing sugar cravings or overall cravings down below. I linked a study um, from an article in there regarding the suppression of ghrelin um, with exercise, whether it be, uh, I think it was cardiovascular and or weightlifting um, helps with the suppression of ghrelin, which is your hunger hormone signaled by the gut telling you you're hungry. So make sure you're being mindful of your physical activity. Be mindful of it, track it, try to add an extra day, especially if progress is slow for you, add an extra day of exercise. It will definitely help control your hunger hormones, therefore making uh, reaching your physique goals a little bit easier. Also, 
it's just better for general overall health and well-being. There's pr plenty of evidence out there suggesting that exercise um, can you know, trigger dopamine responses in the brain, giving you a better sense of well-being. Plus, if you start to feel good and if you start to look good, if you look good, you feel good. And if you feel good, a lot of other things become better in your life. Just it, I find it helps with um, calming me down, anxiety, uh, just making me a happier person being at home, uh, more fun to be around with my children. So put exercise in your life. It will definitely help with the motivation to continue to progress towards your physique goals. All right, and last but not least, let's talk about calories. Yes, the big C word, calories. Do they matter in ketosis on carnivore? Yes, they matter. The laws of thermodynamics still apply. Now, is there some wiggle room when you're in ketosis? There's work done by Ben Bickman, who's basically a ketone insulin uh, doctor, researcher, um, academia, so academia person, and his work shows and what they've been able to find is uh, being in a state of ketosis does provide some sort of mitochondrial inefficiency, which sounds bad, but in this case it's a good thing where it's just wasting heat energy. Um, it's called mitochondrial uncoupling. And uh, this waste of heat energy is basically raising your meta resting metabolic rate, your basal metabolic rate. So you're then burning more calories at rest without any additional effort. Um, and that's through ketosis. What you need to achieve ketosis, two things, and I talk about them frequently, are um, a depletion of liver glycogen, then thus freeing up your liver to convert short chain fatty acids that are broken off uh, during times of low insulin to be converted into ketones for use by uh, the brain, your heart, and wasted as en or ex excreted as energy. And as I just touched on, the second thing is extended periods of time with low insulin. Those two things in combination will help you achieve ketosis help with this mitochondrial uncoupling, thus wasting energy. So he's found that some people can have about an additional 300 energy or 300 calories of wiggle room when it comes to being in ketosis versus not. So you're wasting an additional, potentially an additional 300 calories a, a day through this mitochondrial uncoupling. So yes, calories still matter. You do need to burn more than you take in. You're able to burn more in ketosis, so keep that in mind. Um, and again, you need those two things I talked about earlier to achieve ketosis, a depletion of liver glycogen, usually done through fasting, cutting carbs, and or exercise, or a combination of all, as well as extended periods of time with low insulin generally, again, done through cutting carbohydrates and infrequently eating. So one meal a day, two meals a day, even three meals a day, but spaced out without snacking. Tracking could be beneficial, especially in the beginning. If you're new to this, track your calories, understand where you're at, understand how that amount of calories influences things like your glucose levels and ketone levels. If you don't track, get some blood testings with the little things that poke your fingers. These things are important to know, again, especially in the beginning, so you can get used to it, um, get used to how foods influence you. So that's my rant on calories. Thank you for listening. That's also gonna be it for the video. So I appreciate you watching. I hope you found some information in this quick little video valuable. If you did, please, again, hit the like button down below. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. Share this with people who you would think find this information valuable. Thank you, thank you, thank you again for watching. I really, really do appreciate it. Thank you for listening to me ramble and rant and so on and so forth. Until the next time, keep up the good work and let's get healthy together. See you in the next video.